It's anxiety time. Nobody check my blood pressure right now. It's on here. How do we do, buddy? Pork French will go that low, so we're just gonna snug them up real good. <sighs> wow, look at this. The Renesis engine is built. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys just how I got to this point. Doesn't the microphone sound so good? We are gonna build the hybrid Renesis engine for my RX-8. First, we need to mount the front plate to my engine stand adapter. Don't buy a cheap adapter like I did. So we're gonna drop in the stationary gear and install one bolt to hold it in place. And then go ahead and flip everything upside down. It is time to grab Vaseline, engine assembly lube, all your seals and your front or rear rotor, whichever plate you're starting with. I don't have Vaseline, so I'm just using a really tacky engine assembly lube, but we are going to use this to hold all of the seals in place, as well as lubricate the rotor bearings for the first startup. But uh, I've got this rotor fully stacked. I'm just gonna make sure the corner seals are still lined up. Everybody who builds these engines builds them a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do is drop the rotor in with the side seals and corner seals. And then once we get the rotor housings in, then I will slide in the apex seals. If I'm gonna do this, it's very important that the corner seals are all rotated correctly or else the apex seals will not drop in. Damn it. So I stuck my thumbs in the inside to get a hold. I don't think that was the right move because it looks like my corner seals may have moved. This one has just a little bit. So it looks like I got one corner seal that may have kind of got a little whopper jawed on me. Thankfully, with doing this assembly method, that's very easy to fix. Oh. These are my 1980s RX-7 GSLSE rotor housings. This is what's giving me my two additional exhaust ports. As you can see, I've already applied Hylomar to all the coolant water jacket seals. A factory Mazda inner water jacket seal has a specific orientation. However, I bought the Atkins Rotary Brown water jacket seals, so they can be installed however. The outer water seals do have a specific orientation. You do want to refer to the manual. I installed these dowels off camera. We're just going to drop the rotor housings right onto the dowels and be very careful not to move the rotor as that could change the orientation of the corner seals, which like I said earlier, will make dropping in the apex seals much more difficult. Install the next set of water jacket seals. I'm a little bummed. My rotor has moved. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing at this point. If you guys are curious, this is my old eccentric shaft. We are reusing this as it's in really good shape. There's nothing wrong with the shaft. I have watched enough uh, build videos to know, do not fucking build this backwards. As you can, and it will suck. Oh, this thing's fucking slick. I'm gonna drop it in here. It's actually best to install the eccentric shaft gently. Now is also a good time to ensure that you have the flywheel end of the eccentric shaft or the back of the engine. Otherwise, you will have to fully disassemble this entire keg if you install it backward. So, remember how I said we do not want to slide the rotor because supposedly the corner seals can get out of whack? That's just gone out the fucking window. This thing is all over the housing. Uh, also, I'm a big dum-dum and I was concerned about locating the rotors opposite of one another. Uh, hey, big fucking dummy, the E-shaft is gonna do that for you. You just gotta get it close. Oh, I'm stupid. Okay, can't stop now or the anxiety will win. The only reason I'm a little nervous is because I'm afraid those corner seals may have moved. You may be thinking, yeah. bro, why are you freaking out? You've only got three things on here. You could easily redo all this. While I am enjoying this engine build, the anxiety is eating me alive. I am ready to have this thing assembled. I'm really fucking disappointed. Uh, because I had to move everything so much, being careless, my corner seals became misaligned. I can't tell what's going on, but it almost looks like one of my side seals has popped out. I honestly think I'm gonna put the apex seals in first. Uh, before I start moving anything with the eccentric shaft uh, because that I think is what caused everything to move I've got the apex seals here. Let's go ahead and go drop those in. It seems like everybody does this a little bit differently I'm gonna hang out the apex seal and then prepare both of these springs and then push everything down as one assembly This was actually the most stressful part of the build I didn't film it because I needed my wife's help and she was all dressed for bed, so I didn't want to put her on camera. If you guys have seen videos, putting this fucking center iron on is a task. You have to longitudinally locate the E-shaft just like this. And then at the same time, you have to slip this fucking center iron on. And I could not keep it off of this fucking eccentric shaft. Thankfully, I don't think I've harmed the eccentric shaft, but uh, I was not having fun. Neither was my wife. Repeat those steps a couple times and ta-da, you have a fully built Renesis engine. Here it is. 
Everything is loosely stacked. Uh, I actually got to drop the top gear on and then we're going to start dropping bolts and nuts through and we're going to start torquing everything down. Okay, so my buddy has helped me clean up these tension bolts and then I am dropping on a washer and lubricating them. Now we are going to torque the tension bolts in a couple different passes. I'm gonna start by seating the bolts and then I'm gonna run two passes with the torque wrench. Now following the factory service manual, we need to check the end play. This is the old end play spacer that I had after some machining and changing out a bunch of plates. We are right on the money. It's just time to start reassembling the rest of the engine. Now it's time to install the flywheel and you may be thinking, Mitchell, did you resurface that flywheel if you're gonna run a new clutch? Obviously I did that. What do you think I'd do all this work and then forget to surface the flywheel? That'd be stupid. Listen, your boy was out of time and money, okay? Don't judge me. All right, I got my buddy's torque wrench maxed out to 300 pound feet. The spec on this is 290 and up. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how this is gonna go. <clears throat> Clearly not very well. <clears throat> oh my God, holy shit. All right, I'm at 160 pound feet. I'm gonna need a second person. This stand is making me nervous, bro. Okay. Yeah, I don't trust that. I don't trust that. I bought a cheap engine stand adapter and I am paying the price now. I'm not trusting this, so we're going to repeat this on the ground with a second set of hands. Okay, my front cover is a disgusting mess. I don't know how I let it go this long. Look at that. This right here was a mud dauber nest and I literally just crushed it. That's nuts. Well, my GoPro is doing typical GoPro things, so I didn't get it on film, but hey, the cover is on here. How do we do, buddy? All right, it looks like these things torque down to like 15 pound feet, which I don't even have a torque wrench that'll go that low. So we're just gonna snug them up real good. Okay, so I got the water pump here. Now we just gotta get this assembled on. Come on, bracket. You're doing good so far. Don't give up on me now. Okay, well, the oil pan is on. Okay, I am running the OMP. However, we cannot use the original lines. The GSLSE rotor housings only allow for two oil injectors, which I believe I need FDRX7 oil injectors. So I need to run four lines out of the OMP and the two lines going into the oil injectors. I'm cutting off the one-time use hose clamp so that we can reuse the banjo. We lost the original mounting locations for the knock sensor by removing the Brennesis rotor housings. Clearly there is a threaded boss on the GSLSE rotor housings that we can use. However, there is a wiring harness bracket that has a tab that blocks that port, but it's not really needed, so we're gonna cut it off. This is the mark that I made, so now I'm just gonna grab a Dremel and trim this out. Let's see if my GoPro will record long enough for this. That is where my knock sensor will go, and that is where the tab that is in the way is at, so we are gonna cut around that. Okay, so I put the intake manifold on just like you normally do, and then it was time to install the oil injectors. Thing is, you cannot run the RX-8 oil injectors with the GSLSE rotor housings. However, you also cannot run the GSLSE oil injectors either. There is a collision that exists between the older style oil injectors and the six port intake manifold. They simply will not work together. At this time, I have reason to believe that FD RX-7 oil injectors should work. I've got a hookup on those. I just have to go pick those up. And I'll talk about this in another video later on once I know for a fact what works. Right, we have torqued the e-shaft bolt, we have torqued the flywheel nut, we've also installed a couple of additional accessories off camera. Now without the oil injectors, there's not a whole lot we can do but drop the engine in the car and go ahead and drop it off to get the exhaust manifold made along with the engine mount bracket modified. In the meantime, I'm going to focus on hooking up as many oil, coolant, and fuel connections as I can just to help seal off the engine. Alright, well this side engine mount is a pain in the ass to get through and I've already tore this bolt up and then you just want to do one of these where you climb up, feet up on the wall. Oh, I'm rounding it, done. All right, let's go get a, let's go get a wrench. Just like that, the engine is in the car. 
here's a video of me actually loading it to take it for the fabrication that it needs. The next video should be dropping off and then also picking up the RX-8 whenever that is ready. And then we've just got a little bit more work to do before we can finally fire it up. For now, feel free to click the links on the screen to check out some of my other content. Thank you guys so much for following.